8. Call now. Call now. Welcome back. Chile's devastating 8.8 .8 earthquake this past February destroyed and disrupted much of the country's infrastructure. Its burgeoning wine industry was not spared. Still, that setback has only emboldened the resolve of one of its premier vineyards to get the harvest out. Alexandre Marnier La Pastole is the president of Marnier La Pastole and the great granddaughter of the founder of Grand Marnier. Great to have you here. Hello. Uh, it's an interesting story, I imagine, that takes a venerable French liqueur and uh, winemaker to Chile. How have you found that market? How difficult has it been to establish a vineyard there and begin exporting from there? Uh, well, for us, it was uh, uh, something, uh, e well, not easy, but uh, we have an importer for Grand Marnier for more than uh, 80 years now. It's a family, the same family. So when I arrived in Chile, I was welcomed by them, and so they could really introduce me to the right uh, places, and yeah. I could visit uh, the right vineyards, and then I could make my choice. But with their help, instead of arriving like a newcomer or a tourist, uh, I was able to get on the right spot from the beginning. Let's talk a little bit about Chilean wines, because over the last decade, both the whites and the reds have actually had a bit of a resurgence, if you want to call it that, in terms of brand recognition. Originally, Chilean wines were um, not swill, but they were very low end. They were by the box. Now we have some actual wines that are com competing with Californian Cabernets and Chardonnays. Mm -hmm. When do you think they're going to get the status they deserve, or they're always going to be second tier? Well, it's, um, it's always difficult when you start uh, with um, these, uh, with volumes and a great uh, quality price ratio, then to understand, make the consumer understand that we are now in Chile able to produce really high quality wines. So, but uh, I think that since the, the 90s, where, when the, um, uh, the economy started to be more uh, open and uh, we, we could, uh, the, the Chilean people could import more uh, equipment. Things have changed uh, dramatically and uh, improved dramatically. There is also, um, the, the Chilean people, they know better where to plant on the right uh, soils. And I think that the consumer, little by little, it, t it will take time, but now the consumer um, with the crisis also, I think that they had an opportunity saying, uh, let's try new wines because uh, maybe uh, we can have an uh, opportunity. And I think it was a great opportunity for Chilean wines. Uh. We mentioned the earthquake and it did have a devastating effect on certain parts of the infrastructure. Did it affect your vineyard directly or indirectly? Well, our vineyards were not uh, uh, touched at yeah. all because, uh, in fact, it was more the, the buildings. Uh, but um, personally, we have two, um, two uh, wineries, one which is uh, only for our top wine, the, the Cloa Palta winery. And this uh, was built in 2006 and underground so uh, when I I was not in Chile when it happened I was in Miami and so the first thing I, I asked when I called uh, first thing I said how are the people is everybody safe and they said yes and my second question was and our winery at Cloap Alta because underground uh, I was a little bit um, yeah. worried but uh, we had no, no nothing damage. And we were really, uh, really uh, very uh, lucky. Yeah. Now with, uh, we have another winery where we are producing uh, uh, our Casa wines and the Cuvée Alexandre. And there we had some bottles which were on racks and some racks fall down and we had some bottles which were destroyed. But the where, is, where is the majority of your wine exported to? Is the U.S. now your largest export? country or can you get any of these Chilean wines into European hands? Well, uh, the U.S. is our, our number one uh, export market. After that, uh, Canada 
is also uh, a very good market for us, but we are also exported in, uh, in Europe, in England, in, in, even in France, in Belgium, in uh, Netherlands, uh, uh, Germany, and also uh, Asia and South America. How is uh, Grand Marnier doing? How are the sales uh, holding up? Is the younger generation drinking it the same way uh, as previous generations did? Well, I, uh, I, uh, now I'm in charge also of Grand Marnier in uh, North America. And so since two years, uh, we've been uh, trying to change a little bit uh, the communication about Grand Marnier to yeah. show to consumers that you can uh, drink it uh, with the cocktails where Grand Marnier is the, the hero. So um, this is uh, also a, a, a new way. So we have, uh, for example, here in Canada, we have the Grand Cool with Grand Marnier, cranberry juice uh, and lemon. And uh, in the US, uh, we have the Smash uh, with uh, lemon and uh, mint. And also one of my favorite way to drink it, which I, I am promoting now, is to drink it chilled. And so, because I think it's uh, the, uh, very, it makes it very smooth, uh, easy to drink. And so you put the bottle in the freezer, and then you just pour it, add some uh, ice, a bit of uh, lemon juice, and that's it, and it's delicious. So Grand Marnier, the problem it has, as I can recall having drunk it for many, many years, is you get one hell of a headache if you drink too much of it. Is there a lot no. of sulfites in there? No, 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 I don't, I don't, <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. I think Grand Marnier is very, uh, produced in a very natural way. And, uh, well, I don't, I don't say that you can uh, get uh, drunk with it. But if you drink uh, two or three glasses, that's, um, it's the only, I think it's one of the only liquors or spirit where you don't have headache in the morning. Hmm. Because, no, no, it's true. And I can tell you that I drink quite a lot because uh, it's... Uh, well, you know, I drink a lot too. You and I should get together sometime. Yeah, but it's not <laughs> your business, Kevin. <laughs> Alexandra, we have to leave it there. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Alexandra Magnier L'Apostole, president of Magnier L'Apostole, Inc. Time now for our priceless moment. Move over, Pamela Anderson.